If you know the words, just hum them. And he walks with me, talks with me, and you tell me I am your own. Grace and peace be unto you on this day, the day which the Lord has made. We rejoice and we are glad in it. Welcome to the worship services here at Carmel Presbyterian Church, located at 3549 Reading Road here in historic Avondale. Um, we are having some challenges with our technical difficulties, so we are recording the services and then we will share those at a later date. So right now, you get the first edition. Amen. All right, and sometimes we realize there are blessings just for those who are in the house before the blessings will reach out back and forth. So we are grateful for each and every one of you to be here on this day. And we are grateful just to celebrate God as we begin our Lenten season. So amen, it is great. I am grateful to see each and every one of you here. Um, during our prayer time, a little bit later on, uh, we will ask that you will uh, lift up not only uh, some of the families on our sick and shut-in list, but also if you would lift up uh, Mrs. Adams, the first lady. She was not feeling well today. So uh, we're gonna praise God with her and uh, we're gonna ask the Lord to bless her as well during this time. And uh, we're just come here to have a good time in the Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, as your spirit fills the temple through your people. Gracious Heavenly Father, as we ask for you to send your presence to be with us on this day, this day which you have made, this day which you challenged us to rejoice and to be glad in it. Lord, we are grateful that you walk with us, that you talk with us, and that you call us your own. So now, Lord, as we come together, we just pray that each and every element of this service be pleasing unto you. Each and every element of this service, O oh Lord, would, would reach you and be sweet unto you. And that, Lord, as you remind us that we are your people, that you have called each and every one of us by name, that, Lord, this is a blessed time, especially as we begin to reflect during this Lenten season. So now, Lord, we just ask that you bless and you touch each and every element of this service for your glory. Anoint all those who will sing. Anoint all those who will share. Anoint all those who will pray, which means, Lord, anoint each and every one of us that we might be united in the body of Christ. Thank you for this time together. Bless this time, O Lord. In Jesus' most holy name we ask and we pray. And all of God's children say amen. Amen and amen. Carmel Presbyterian Church, let us worship God.
If you have served, if you serve a God that does great things, make some noise. I feel like I got to keep up with the choir today. Amen. Amen. The, the spirit of praise. Amen. That, that spirit of praise. Yes, we are glad. And I don't know what, what's gotten into the mighty voices today. Is it the weather or just uh, the fact we didn't have to figure out what coat and what boots we were going to wear? But uh, amen. Whatever is in the water, keep drinking it. Amen. Amen. We are grateful for you all to be here on this day. And we are grateful to celebrate just another day in the land of the living. We are in the month of March. We are also in what is called the Lenten season. And uh, I am mindful that sometimes the church has these moments and these times that you just kind of go along with it, but you still kind of scratch your heads wondering, well, what are we supposed to do? Um, so again, um, we are grateful that um, you allow uh, the church to kind of not do what has always been done, but again, to enter into to this time and, and this space um, where we are called to go on a symbolic journey like our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ went those 40 days in the wilderness. Um, so whether you are practicing individually um, some type of fasting or some type of uh, meditation or reflection, again, we are with you. We know that it leads to a glorious time in the Lord when we get to Holy Week. Um, and that is where we will serve the Lord's Supper. In the Lenten season, we are mindful that Jesus Christ gathered the disciples on that Thursday. We call it the Monday Thursday. And uh, we will go through that in the life of the church as well as Good Friday um, and then Resurrection Sunday. So if you would allow your church members to journey along with you. Um, we are excited to see what God is doing. We're excited to see what God has done today. Um, because again, each of us has an individual journey. And because we are blessed in our individual journeys, it adds to the church's journey. So again, as you are going about your walk with the Lord, we are grateful to, to see you walking with God, but we're grateful for what you are sharing with your church family as well. So we are grateful. Um, we are mindful that in the month of March, next Sunday, we will look forward to celebrating all of the March birthdays. Um, I can't tell you the surprises that would have been here today, but um, just know next week you got a treat. No, I haven't been able to get in the kitchen all week, so just know that there's a, a special treat in store for those. And uh, again, we look forward to, we, we want to have those occasions where we celebrate life. So what more joyous occasions than to celebrate birthdays, another year under the sun. And uh, if you don't mind, your church family wants to recognize this wonderful list of, of members who are celebrating in the month of March. So we will uh, celebrate those next Sunday. We are mindful in our Lenten season, we have begun a journey with um, our sister church Emmanuel Presbyterian Church. We'd like to thank those who were able to attend this Ash Wednesday service at Emmanuel. And also we thank those who joined in on our prayer line. Uh, Sister Margie, Pastor Brad heard you over the phone and he was like, I can't wait to meet you. Um, but again, we are using our technology to our advantage to be able to, to make sure that everybody connects. Uh, for those who aren't comfortable gathering as of yet, um, again, we're going to make sure that we are recording services. We are making those available to our sick and shut in. For those who want to feel like, Lord, I believe I can venture out, um, again, we're going to make that uh, available. Each and every Wednesday, we are going to share along with Emmanuel. The theme is, this is my story, this is my song. So we're asking uh, 
We've asked certain individuals to share their testimony. So we're grateful that actually uh, Sister Vicki and Sister Amima uh, will be able to take a Wednesday in the month of March to be able to kind of lead us in their personal devotions uh, as we continue to count down to uh, Holy Week. So we're grateful for that and uh, we want you to show some love and support to our church members as, uh, as we see God doing not only a new thing, but uh, it is very interesting how the Lord is bringing his church together. We are mindful how we have been gone um, a walk with the members of North and the members of uh, West, well, Bond Hill. Um, I'm mindful that we keep the brothers and sisters of West Cincinnati in our prayers. Their pastor has decided to uh, go a different direction. So they are also in search of pastoral leadership. And we have shared with them, there's enough room for all. There's enough room in the sanctuary. So again, we are walking with them. But if you know any of the members individually, let them know that their church family is praying for them. And that we have all gone through these moments and times and challenges and pastoral leadership and it's okay. Um, we are also mindful um, that we are walking with our brothers and sisters of heritage um, especially we are looking to set a date for when we can have some conversations. The congregations can come together, small groups to kind of figure out, um, just to figure out how we can better walk together in the ways of God. Um, not to figure out, well, what has happened and who did us wrong and what's going on and what's wrong with the church. We have, we have a lot of experts who can tell us what's wrong with the church. But again, we need a few saints to come together and be like, this is what the Lord is doing and this is what's right with the church. It's God and God inspires us to come around to see what unites us is far greater and far stronger than what will ever try to cause a divide. So we're looking forward to these conversations with heritage and we're mindful that in our Presbytery of Cincinnati, they, um, the charge has been um, given and we see in this world um, how how charged whether race relations whether social justice issues um, how charged it is just for us to just come together just to have conversations but again there are a few saints who know the goodness of the Lord that say you know what God's got us and uh, we can come together and we want to do our part together. So as you will hear more information about that, we are grateful to be able to share. Um, please keep those in our sick and shut-in list in your prayers, send them cards. Um, I've been in touch with Lynn Calloway, keep the Calloway family in your prayers. Um, because we're mindful that even though, um, even though sometimes we're physically not in the sanctuary, you are always a part of the kingdom of God, especially as it comes to Carmel Presbyterian Church. So what that means is love is not going to let you go. What that means is we will always be here with open arms and open doors, so whenever you feel comfortable and ready, we're here. But it also means we're not going to sit and wait for you to just decide. We're going to reach out as well. Um, so we're reaching out. Know that we are reaching out and uh, we're asking each and every one of you to do your part as well. Not to be nosy in somebody's business, but just to share the love of the Lord. Because how many of us know God will put people on our minds and not let us sleep, not let us eat, not let us rest until I, I told you to go reach out to that person. That is your gift, that is your ministry. And until you fulfill your ministry, uh, God might not let you rest. So go forth and just do what the Lord has asked you to do. Amen? Amen. All right, so with that in mind, if we have our ushers in place, 
Let us prepare to give back to the Lord our tithes and offerings, worshiping God um, in our giving. Remembering that is we are more blessed to give than to receive. The ushers would come forward. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we come before you, God, worshiping you with our gifts. Worshiping you, O oh God, with those things that you have given to us first, that you've called us and that you show us and you, you groom us to be good stewards. So Lord, we now give back to you that which you've given us for your glory, whether it be for ministries worldwide, or whether it be the ministries right here within the church. Lord, thank you that you can use our little to do much. Bless each in the heart, bless each and every heart now to give freely, to give cheerfully, to give as unto you. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we give back to you. We give back to you what is yours. Lord, give us wisdom. Show us how to use your gifts for your glory. Lord, bless the hearts that have given. Bless those who wanted to give. But circumstances were different. Lord, Please show and reveal that we have gifts besides money to give. Thank you for this time and opportunity to worship you through the, the, the gifts, through the blessings of giving. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may be seated. So during this Lenten season, a couple of the Sundays have been led to talk about battles. You ever feel like you, you feel like you're in a battle? You're fighting. 
Sometimes it's an enemy that you can identify and recognize. Sometimes you are your own enemy that you are battling. But whatever it might be, sometimes it's just the alarm clock is ringing and you're like, Lord, five more minutes. Sometimes you're battling the past. I know I'm battling the fact that next week time changes. But in battles. So I want to use the word of God to point us and to look at battles that we might face. Because we have to have a certain perspective when we are going into these conflicts, into these engagements. Uh, because I believe the Lord has some wisdom for us. The Lord has some instructions for us. And especially as we're going through and every time it seems like there's another news story and, and we hear about the things going on in Ukraine and Russia, the things going on here in the streets of Cincinnati, and we might not even hear, but, you know, there might be some things going on in your own home under your own roof. Parents may be with your parents, and parents may be with your children. Battles. I believe the Lord has, well, I know the Lord has some words for us. Because this is going to help keep us grounded for what is to come. And not only grounded, this is going, these are part of uh, the beginning of our marching orders. For you see, as we are going through the battles, we have to realize that we are part of an army. <laughs> we are part of God's army. And sometimes the battles that we are called to, to, to fight in, they're only because God claims us as his own. So beginning with this passage in 2 Kings, um, I want to begin to kind of delve into that um, and let us meditate as well to hear what the Lord has to say and meditate on this when the Lord fights your battles. When the Lord fights your battles, let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we come before you on this day, this most glorious day, this day which you have made, and, and Lord, we, we fight to rejoice even. Lord, speak to us through your holy word. Open our eyes so that we might see like all of your servants before. And Lord, that we might see you even in the midst of conflict. That you will lead us, that you will guide us, and as we heard the choir preach to us earlier, you will help us to, to be still at times. You will order our steps in your word at, at times, oh God. But all of these things work together for your good in us. So Lord, bless this time now. It's in Jesus' most holy name we ask and we pray. Amen. So our scripture passage for today comes from 2 Kings, the seventh chapter, verses one through nine. Also, I would share that it would probably be good if you have one of your Bibles that you like to mark up to bring them to service. So that way, as you have your homework assignments, you can kind of highlight and jot those down as well. Amen. So our scripture passage, 2 Kings, the seventh chapter, verses one through nine. Amen. Listen now to the word of the Lord. Then Elisha said, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Lord says about this time tomorrow at the gate of Samaria. A sea of flour, fine flour will sell for a shekel 
and two seas of barley will sell for a shekel. But the officer on whose arms the king leaned answered the man of God, look, even if the Lord were to make windows in heaven, could this really happen? You will see it with your own eyes, replied Elisha, but you will not eat any of it. Now there were four men with leprosy at the entrance of the city gate. And they said to one another, why just sit here until we die? If we say, let us go into the city, we will die there from the famine in the city. But if we sit here, we will also die. So come now, let us go over to the camp of the Arameans. If they let us live, we will live. If they kill us, we will die. So they arose at twilight and they went to the camp of the Arameans. And when they came to the outskirts of camp, there was not a man to be found. For the Lord had caused the Arameans to hear the sounds of chariots, horses, and a great army, so that they said to one another, Look, the king of Israel must have hired the kings of the Hittites and the Egyptians to attack us. Thus the Arameans had arisen and they fled at twilight, abandoning their tents and their horses and their donkeys. But the camp was intact and they had run for their lives. When the lepers reached the edge of the camp, they went into a tent to eat and drink. Then they carried off the silver and gold and clothing and went and hid them. And on returning, they entered another tent, carried off some other items from there and hid them. Finally, they said to one another, you know, we are not doing what is right. Today is a day of good news. If we are silent and wait until the morning light, Our sins will overtake us. Now, therefore, let us go and tell the king's household. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thank you, O Lord. Thank you, O Lord. So, there's a lot to unpack in this passage. And as the Lord leads us, um, we'll see what we can get through on this day. But again, we're going to talk over the next couple of Sundays about the battles that we find ourselves in. We have to recognize in our, our passage the different players that God was fighting battles for each and every one of them at the time. We have the prophet Elisha. We have the lepers. We have the Arameans. And we have the enemies, both seen and unseen. One of the things as we get into our passage, it's ironic that We don't know what happened to the Arameans. We don't know what happened to those large armies that were against God. And it's funny that as these four lepers who were basically outcasts of society and and basically they felt like they, they were dead no matter what happened. So it's like, well, we'll just throw ourselves at the mercy of these enemies, the Arameans. Uh, They get there. They're like, wait a minute. Nobody is here. Wait a minute. What has gone on? And and then there is a word that God's enemies were driven out. God's enemies were driven out to the point they didn't have time to pick up anything. They didn't have time to say, hey, let's bring, take all the stuff and move the camp. God's enemies were so scared of what God did that they just hightailed it. In the earlier passage that introduces um, our scripture for today, 
Elisha, the, the prophet of God, who had a, a word from God, went and, and, and told them, all right, the conditions that you have been living in will not be anymore. There was a famine in the land, and food was at a premium. So it literally cost you an arm and a leg. It literally cost you whatever your life savings were just to buy some food. And here comes a, a man of God, a mighty man of God. And he's like, you know what? Tomorrow things are going to be different. But you know how those people, when they're listening to the men and women of God, like to be... Yeah, I know you, you said you had a word from the Lord that things were going to be different, but you really don't understand what I'm going through. Amen, right? Right? There's that word that comes to us, but, but you don't know what I've seen. You don't, you know, we want to be the God experts. Well, yeah, God can bless any other situation, and, and God can do that, but, but this is me, and I don't know what I did to God, but okay. Elisha just dropped the word of the Lord. And then Elisha was like, okay, first lesson here. Um, and again, we've talked about it before in some services. Be careful what comes out your mouth because it'll be self-fulfilling prophecy. For Elisha and Elisha, for those who are familiar with the prophet Elisha, Elisha was raised under Elijah. Elijah. You remember last week the transfiguration? Elijah was also the other one up on the mountain with Jesus and, and Moses and when we have to be transfigured. Elijah raised Elisha and when the time came to pass on the mantle, Elisha dared to say, I want a double portion of what the prophet Elijah can do. So Elisha built upon his relationship with the Lord. So Elisha was more than qualified to speak a word from God. Because when Elisha spoke what the Lord had said and God proved it true, that means that, okay, God is in this. So we're mindful that if God sends a messenger your way to, to, to declare to you whether good or bad what God is about to do, we best take heed of it because it's not coming from Elisha, it's coming from the Lord. It's not coming from the service, it's coming through God. And, and we have to be mindful that when there are words from the Lord that come, that God is going to confirm that word. So that way we will know how to govern ourselves accordingly. So again, Elisha declares and shares because the battle then and there was people were hungry. There was a famine. All right, let, let's bring it to 2022. Um, <laughs> all right, there, there is a virus, you know, COVID-19. And, and now that, you know, it seems like all of a sudden, well, the CDC said, okay, we, we can kind of come. But wait a minute. God was telling God's people, wait a minute, I got you through this. I got you through everything else that you have seen. And we're, don't worry, this is not going to give you any harm if you follow the steps. If you follow. If you are pressed and if you are clinging close to the Lord, recognize that as God is fighting this battle. God's got us. There is always a challenge with the people of faith where we want to, I don't say we want to prove God wrong, but we sometimes, I'm being liberal with that, we, we lend ourselves more to, to what's the worst that has happened to us and what is the worst that probably might happen to us. We're experts on the pains of the past and we're experts on those things that we think might come about. Even though we don't recognize and we don't realize that God has already designed our path and God's got us, 
So if we spent more time following God, as opposed to going through all of the possibilities and the consequences of the possibilities, then from there we might actually gather a few more moments of sleep and be able to rest in the Lord, to be still. Throughout our scriptures, we hear about our, our battles. And in this passage in 2 Kings, um, they continue to come alive. In 2 Corinthians, the 10th verse, it will tell us the weapons of our warfare are not carnal or are not physical, but they're mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds. Thinking God can't change your situation, <laughs> that's a stronghold. Because you haven't seen what God can do. You haven't made yourself available to let God move. But it's a stronghold when we're sitting there. It's like, I'm praying, but, but, but God hasn't moved yet. Well, I, I'm going to go, Lord, you know how we make bargains with the Lord. Well, Lord, if you move in such a way, I'm, I'm going to serve you. Or we're waiting for God to do something first before we commit, because again, that's that stronghold. Well, why should I put myself out there for you, God, if I'm gonna be the only one? Why should I lean and do this and stand on your word if there's no tangible proof? Why should I walk, take a step in faith when, when God, the last time I took a step, they were mean to me. They didn't welcome me, they didn't, Greet me. Somebody didn't smile at me. Well, you know, we got a whole list of things, right? Don't get quiet on me, church. Because part of this, is, part of our faith walk now is to tie what happens outside of 3549 Reading Road with what happens in our homes and in our everyday life. Because God is like, there are going to be some battles that they dare not step foot on on, on, on hollow ground here in the sanctuary. But as soon as you step outside, they're ready to take you out. They are ready. Yeah, I saw you pray. I heard you singing in there. But you know what? We're going to heap some coals on your head and let's see how godly you are now. But realize that God fights our battles. Realize the battle that you are going through, the battle you are struggling with, whether it be some, some heart pains or something in, in your head, something emotionally, something with family, something at work, whatever battle you find yourself in, that battle is not really yours. It's the Lord's. It might feel personal, but that's because your purpose what God has designed you for, what God has created you for, you cannot fully realize it if you are in the midst of that battle. You know how sometimes we're in battles and we just want to pull the covers over our heads. Nobody will care. Nobody wants to listen. But no, God's like, no, I got you. I got you more than you can realize. Because the beauty in our second Kings passage is that you have four lepers. In Old Testament times, lepers were outcasts. They, they were not welcome in the body of Israel. And having that physical affliction meant that, okay, there must have been some type of sin in your life and God has punished you. But yet these lepers provide an example of how God blesses even those that society would think no, wait a minute, you're an outcast. You've done something wrong. So here are these four lepers, and, and they, they're trying to decide, well, which enemy do we give in with? Do we stay out here, and do we die of starvation? Do we go to the enemy's camp? What, what are we supposed to do? So they decide, well, let's go to the Arameans, and, and if we die, we, we die. They expected something different. <laughs> Imagine that, the people of God going into a battle <laughs> expecting something different, amen? Imagine that when somebody's like, oh, we going to Carmel, and, and when they get to Carmel, wait a minute, there's something different. I'm planting seeds today. 
these seeds are going to take root. But again, just, just, just go with me. Go, go. Because again, God is doing this new thing. So again, part of this is in our church experience, we cannot go into church just expecting the same old. When we come to worship, we are coming to bring what God has given us to say, thank you, God. And then from there, God's like, well, good. Because see, this is that rally cry. This is where if there's no other place you are loved, you are loved right here. You don't have to prove anything. You don't have to give any credentials. All you have to do is say, I am a child of the Most High God. I claim Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And then from here, God's like, all right, let's get ready to go. And, and, and our gathering here prepares us for what we have to deal with sometimes on the outside, whether physically outside or sometimes what's on the outside of the hearts that God has given us. Because part of the battles that we will get into later on is, again, the Apostle Paul was always saying the spirit is fighting the flesh. Our spirits, the spirit connected with God is fighting our flesh, our minds, and what we think we know. And when we go through those conflicts right there, again, that's where the strongholds might try to take place. Your flesh might actually try to tell you, well, God can't move on your situation. Your flesh might try to tell you that there are no more miracles in 2022. Your flesh might tell you that God doesn't love you and has just left you and abandoned you March the 6th, 2022, and you are offending on your own. But the spirit of the living God says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. The spirit of the living God says, there is nothing that can separate you from my love. And if we don't get this word in us, if we don't plant this seed in us, when we get into battle, we're already defeated before we raise the weapons. This battle, even though it feels very personal, it is not yours. Because this battle is not yours, it means you don't have to try to pull things out of your hat. You don't have to try to perform any miracles under your own power. You just have to stand on the name of the Lord. You want an example of standing on the name of the Lord? David versus Goliath. David versus that Philistine. Instead of David versus Goliath, you put your name where David's is and whatever enemy, whatever thing that seems so big that you cannot conquer, it is you versus that. And it's really disarming when we talk about David versus Goliath because even David pointed to us, David, a man after God's own heart, that David never went into the battle without God. So it's David and God. Versus whatever thinks that they can knock you out. Because the battle is the Lord's. 1 Samuel, the 17th chapter, verse 47, when David was decreeing and declared to the Philistine, and that all this assembly will know that the Lord does not save by sword nor spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hand. When you know that the battle is the Lord's, God gives you that courage to even face your enemy and be like, uh-uh, not today. No. Your family. Creating havoc within your family, your children. God has given you the power to stand and say, uh-uh, not today. You will not have my children. Because they are the Lord's. Whatever battle you are going through, even if the battle is within yourself, God's like, uh-uh, wait a minute, you are mine. I don't care how you would like to describe yourself. I don't care how much you think you are crazy. You are mine, so you are wonderfully and fearfully made. You might try to call yourself crazy, but you're not going to call one of my creations crazy. The battle is the Lord's. 
which means all the pressure is off you and I. We don't have to try to come up with some marvelous weapon. We don't have to try to come up with some marvelous, you know, technique of fighting. All we have to do is just take the word of God, that two-edged sword, and just stand on it. But you can't stand on God's word if you don't know it, if you don't preach it, if you don't speak it. If you don't know how to pull it out when, when you need it the most. Even the hymns that we sing are based on scripture. You don't need words on a page. You just need to bury that word in your heart and then allow God to bring it out when the time is right. So these four lepers going to the enemy's camp expecting one thing and then boom, wait a minute, where are the enemies? You know, that, that bad thing, that bad situation that you were expecting. You know, back when we were doing parking lot services and I don't know, Carmel might run out of money. You know, that enemy, that type of situation where we are thinking one thing and, and that day we had a offering over $10,000. How many people were in the parking lot? How many people remember that? Amen. You're witnesses to that. Again, God fights the battles. God fights the battles. God said that the ministries going on here at Carmel declaring my word are worth it, that I'm going to give Carmel whatever Carmel needs. I just need a couple of people to be faithful over it. Just a couple, not a whole lot, just a couple. Just two or more gathered in the Lord's name. Just a couple. So if God can do that for the church that you are attached and connected, that you are a part of, imagine what happens once you leave the sanctuary. Does that mean, well, if I don't come to Carmel, that's it, I don't have God's protection? No! That means that covering is going to go with you wherever you go. That covering is in the car when somebody is looking on their phone, texting, instead of paying attention on I-75. That covering is with you when you walk into the classrooms. That covering is with you when you go into the hospitals. That covering is with you wherever you go because God is fighting your battles. And because God is fighting the battles, we need to make sure we have a proper perspective. Because one of the beauties in 2 Kings was that Elisha was in a, a, a battle a couple of chapters before going in and he was looking around like, I, I don't know about this. I, I don't know if I have enough. And then the angel of the Lord revealed, wait a minute, there are more for you than against. God's got you covered. If there is nothing else that you take from this, just realize that this battle, which is the Lord's, that you are caught up in, God's already got you. All you got to do is stand you got to make sure you are armored up. You put on your whole armor of God. But again, make sure that you have your word of God ready when it's time to strike. Because again, in this Lenten season, as we're trying to reflect what Jesus did, when, when the enemy came, when Jesus was his weakest, when the body, when the stomach was growling, 40 days and 40 nights without food, without water, and, and, and God does this crazy thing. When we, were without, when we are without our physical needs, God feeds our spirit so that it doesn't matter. When Moses went up to the mountain 40 days and 40 nights without any provisions, God, God nourished him to the point when he came down, what? His face was glowing. It was like, wait a minute, you've been around God. It wasn't, oh my goodness, look how skinny you are. Or, look how famished you are. Oh my, no, it wasn't about that. And even when we look at the New Testaments and we read the scriptures and talk about when you fast, don't fast so everybody knows, oh, I'm fasting. But, you know, put some oil on your face and just walk as if you're walking with the Lord because what God sees in secret, he's going to reward. Again, when we're going into battle and when the enemy thinks we are physically weakest, that's where the spirit of God is strongest so we can say it is written. God has said, we can do like Elijah said, this is a word from the Lord. 
And the beauty is that in knowing and getting to know each and every one of you, I've seen God move in your lives, whether you care to admit it or not. I've seen the love of God in everything that you do, and even the little quiet things you try to keep on the low. And the beauty is you have a church that is continuing to lift you up in prayer because we know what kind of battles you are facing. Sanctuary is a place where you are supposed to rest. Sanctuary is a place where you are supposed to recharge. Sanctuary is a place where you realize that God's got us and now we're ready to go forth. But we have to have that proper perspective to realize that the battle is not ours. Say it with me. The battle is not mine. Say it like you mean it. The battle is not mine. So at the hospital, and I'm gonna ask my I'm gonna ask my residents and my interns to forgive me for calling them out, but um, there are certain times they go into a a room and it's like I don't know what to say. There are certain times when they feel like, I didn't do anything. All I did, I just sat there. I was supposed to say something. And they feel like I did something wrong. We don't realize what God is doing just with our own presence of being there, reassuring somebody that you don't have to face a situation by yourself. God will send us to be those agents of the Lord, the hands and the feet of Christ. Because how many of us know sometimes it's better just to stand there in silence and support than to say something dumb and stupid? Oh, don't worry, God's got... God just wants us to stand there and let the Spirit of God minister in such a way that when the appointed time comes, then we can share a word from the Lord rather than a word that shows that we're uncomfortable with the silence. You know, be still. And again, the sooner we realize that the battle is the Lord's and the sooner we realize that we are part of God's army, from there, that will help guide us and lead us so that that way we are able to stand and just watch the glory of God. The four lepers realized after they went and they were like, oh, we got food today. And then they came back the next day and they were like, oh, we got, we got some silver, we got some gold, we got some more food. Whereas they could not eat around people because of their condition, they finally realized, wait a minute, this is a day that all should rejoice because God's enemy just left the camp as is. And God blessed them regardless of their personal experiences with Israel to go back and to share the good news. They realized God was able to confuse that enemy. God was able to drive that enemy out without there being any bloodshed. At the end of Lenten season, we will celebrate that the only blood that was shed was Jesus for you and I. And it achieved a marvelous wonder for you and I to, to, to remind us that yes, that battle is won. We will celebrate as we get closer and closer when Jesus Christ declared, this power is in my hands. Death has no sting. And he was preparing the disciples to go forth to tell the stories over and over again. He was preparing the disciples to be a part of those battles. He was preparing the disciples to teach others how to fight. He was preparing the disciples to pass the lessons down so that we here at Karma would know that the battle is not ours, it is the Lord's, and we have been equipped to stand. But it doesn't stop here. 
because we know the battle is the Lord, now it's up to you and it's up to you and it's up to all of us to share with others that are going through the battles to, to tell them, surrender it to God. God doesn't have an end for you. God loves you. God doesn't want to see you perish. No, God knows the plans and the purpose. And sometimes the only way we will move and act as a soldier of the Lord is if we are in a dire situation. Because God is like, well, I gave you an opportunity to serve. I gave you a sign-up sheet. I had somebody call you on the phone. I put something on a billboard. You didn't move. You hesitated. Well, I'll wait till somebody else does something first. Then sometimes we have those situations where all we can do is just fall on our knees. Just pray to the good Lord to move. And then God's like, I got you. We can spend time together now. You're ready. And you're ready to hand that battle over to me. Carmel, I know you're strong, but I also know you grow tired. Carmel, I've seen the battles. Some are well documented, some you can just see it on your faces. Not only do you tell yourself that the battle is not mine, remind yourself that this battle is the Lord's. Bind it around your necks. Put it on a post-it note, put it on your mirror in the morning. Whatever you need to do to remind yourself that the battle is not mine, it is the Lord's. Do so and watch the tide turn. Watch those enemies. And, and you know, I love David because even in the 23rd Psalms, what does he talk about his enemies? Lord, you prepare a table for me in the midst of mine enemies. Imagine that crazy kind of faith that instead of, oh, wait a minute, the enemy's coming this way, I'm going to run that way. You standing on God and you looking at the enemy in the eyeballs, whether it be your own in the mirror or whether it be whatever situation that you're facing. And you realize that God gives you that peace to be able to realize not only can you stand and withstand, but God's going to turn this around for your good. The battle is not ours, it's the Lord's. So there's a couple of lessons that we learn in particular from Second Kings that I want to make sure that we grab hold of. First lesson, and this was from the example of Naaman, one of the king's leaders in Second Kings is, Make sure that you do what the Lord tells you to do. For those who are familiar with Naaman, Naaman was a leper and he was seeking healing. So he went around and he found the people of God and instead of talking to Naaman face to face, the instructions were just go down, dip yourself in the water seven times. And Naaman was like, wait a minute, there should be more. You can't even come and you can't even see me. Your homework assignment reads 2 Kings, the fifth chapter, to dig into that story. But again, we try to make the ways of God so complex that God's like, no, just if I share a word with you, just, just do as I ask you to do. And watch God work. Watch God fight. We don't need any extravagant Miracle, we just need to follow what God instructs us to do. So with Naaman, after he dipped, he was healed. He did what the Lord told him to do. He did what he was instructed to do by the Lord. And we'll let that marinate for a week. Next thing to do. Realize that your praise is a weapon. 
as we will see in, in, in some of the other battle stories, they didn't need to raise any type of physical weapon. They just needed to praise God. And they watched as God moved. When we study the story of Jericho, we, we see as they're praising God, the, the noise that they made brought the walls down. You got to realize your praise can bring some walls down. You got to realize when you stand on the name of the Lord, whatever's trying to stand up there, whatever's trying to come against you, whatever's trying to block your vision from God, it's got to come down in the name of the Lord. But we'll get into more of that. But last, make sure that we do not underestimate God's ways or God's moves. The prophet Isaiah told us, Isaiah 55, verses 8 and 9, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Because the battle is the Lord's God, God is not only two moves ahead, God already knows who gets the victory. You and I know who gets the victory because our, our Bible tells us so. Jesus, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So if you think you are part of the losing battle, uh-uh. You are a child of the Most High God and, and, and secret, which is revealed to all, Jesus wins. Amen. Amen. Jesus wins and because the battle is the Lord's and because Jesus wins all we are called to do is just stand on that name which is above every other name no matter what capacity no matter what your gift is when you stand on that name when you stand on that word you're not going to lose that battle because it's not your battle it's God's battle and God's not going to let any harm come to you that does not glorify God now, we will clarify, yes, there are some pains and there are some sufferings that a Christian goes through. But again, in the end, God reveals the glory because the world sees you went through all of that. You still praise God and God still claims you. There's a victory in that. And we'll get into that as we get through this Lenten season. So church, realize as we prepare to go out, even if you are the most peaceful of persons, there is an enemy that is seeking to destroy your peace. <laughs> but that's a defeated foe. You are called to stand on the name of the Lord, so bury God's word deep in your hearts and let it grow so you can stand. For whatever challenges, whatever trials, whatever tribulations, whatever temptations even that we might face, allow God's word to flourish so that that way you will be able to stand and to declare and decree that the battle is the Lord's and that our God will never, ever lose. Amen. 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 We'd like to open up the doors of the church if there's one that'd like to come, one that would like to join. We would ask that you would do so at this time. Also, as we have our invitational hymn, we are, will end this portion of our recording and then we will get to um, our intimate times of prayer. We would ask for those who are led and able to either sit on this front pew or even come down to the altar to kneel down as we have this time of prayer. But again, uh, it is a time to just come and a time to, to worship with God. Amen. If there's one, won't you come?
have a time. We're gonna have a time. We're gonna have. Let this song fuel you over the week. As you have a time in the name of the Lord, as you are facing those battles, God's got you. Now as we go forth, speak into your life, speak into your situation that God's got this battle. As you go forth, as the enemy would try to take your faith out at the knees, realize that it is on your knees in prayer where God is strongest. Go forth with the love of God. Go forth with that hope in God. Go forth with that joy in God and realize that during this time, God's going to show you. God's just waiting for you to give it to him. And that this message is not just for us here, but it's for all those that we will come in contact with, for all those that we will pray for, and for our blessed peace within. Go forth now with the love of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, with the guidance of God's Holy Spirit, and with the love of God that sent Jesus to this earth to live, to die, and to be resurrected, and to be waiting for the day when God says, go get my children. To him be all glory, power, dominion, henceforth and forevermore. And God's people said, amen, amen, amen and amen.